Hey! Hi! How you doing? This is the Gamertron, and welcome back to the Gamertron Show. And it's rare that a video game actually makes me RAGE, like Rage 2 has. And the reason I am in such a rage over Rage 2 is because Rage 2 isn't all the rage. But it could have been. Damn it, it could have been. For those of you who have been following the development of Rage 2, you will know that there are two halves to it because two different development studios worked on the game. The first being id Software, developers of Doom, Quake, and the original Rage, and the second being Avalanche Studios, the developers of the Just Cause games and Mad Max. Everyone assumed that because of the pedigree of both of these developers, Rage 2 would come out to be excellent. Ugh, and that's what makes this sting all the more. You see, Rage 2 isn't a bad game. Objectively speaking, it isn't a bad game, but Fuck me sideways. It could have been so much fucking better. This is the epitome of wasted potential, and let me tell you why. You see, there's a reason reviews are so split on Rage 2. You see, the people who like the game, and even the people who dislike the game, can all agree on one thing. The gunplay, the combat, is excellent. I myself would argue it's even more than excellent. That Rage 2 absolutely has some of the best first-person shooter gunplay and combat gameplay in the entire first-person shooter genre. No, seriously, the weapons, the superpowers, they are so meticulously detailed and designed. The variety of mechanics attached to each weapon and each superpower allow for so many gameplay possibilities and opportunities and dynamic, visceral player decisions during combat. Rage 2's combat gameplay can be so much goddamn fun. If you love the combat gameplay of first-person shooters like Doom 2016 and Titanfall 2, like I do, then it's very easy to appreciate what Rage 2 has to offer. You see, the thing that everyone likes about Rage 2 the guns, the superpowers, the combat, the overall gameplay. From my understanding, from what information has been given to the public, all of that, that part of the game everyone likes, was developed by id Software. Meanwhile, what's the other part of the game that everyone is criticizing and taking issue with, myself included? The story, the writing, the mission design, the side activities, the open world. That was all developed by Avalanche. Here's the thing though, this shouldn't have surprised us. You're probably thinking, what do you mean by that, Gamertron? Avalanche made Mad Max, and they made Just Cause 2. Avalanche has made good games, they can make good games, they can do better than this. No, they can't actually. Let's take a look at Avalanche Studios' two most recent games before Rage 2. First, Generation Zero. Oof! Uh, okay, how about Just Cause 4? Oof! Mega oof! You see, Avalanche Studios is in a rut. They have two fucking problems. One is that they keep copy-pasting the same open-world format archetype from Just Cause 2. Ever since their overwhelming success with Just Cause 2, Avalanche has been obsessively committed to try and catch lightning in a bottle twice. Based on all their recent games, including Rage 2, they seem to believe if they just make the open world as big as possible, it doesn't matter how much content is actually in that open world, just the size. Avalanche appears to believe that it's only the size of open worlds that matters. How big they are, how much wide open empty fuck all space there is. I can only guess and assume that their thought process is well, it worked for Just Cause 2, that must mean it'll work for any open world we make. Avalanche seems to misunderstand the context behind why so many people liked Just Cause 2 back in 2010 when it released. Look at the context of the time period and the year Just Cause 2 was released in. Open world games weren't in abundance, and the excessive and overwhelming size of Just Cause 2's open world map was fresh and new and different. No one had played an open world video game of that ridiculous size and scale before. However, now, today, it's been almost 10 years since the release of Just Cause 2. We now have an endless supply of open world games. Open world games that now not only have massive size and scale, but meticulous design and detail and depth to the open world environments themselves. Quantity matched with quality. But Avalanche, Avalanche doesn't believe in quality over quantity or equally balancing the two. They solely believe quantity. Just make the open world map ridiculously big. Who cares if there's miles upon miles of empty space with nothing to do? All that matters is that the open world is big. Here's the kicker, however. 
Context is everything. There's nothing wrong with a large, wide open world map. And for some games of certain genres, certain game types, it can absolutely work. For example, what I would argue to be Avalanche Studios' magnum opus, the best game they've ever made, Mad Max. Mad Max has a ridiculously sized open world, but it works with the game's story, atmosphere, and getting you engaged, immersed in the post-apocalyptic world of Mad Max. It also suits and fits well with the actual gameplay of the game, the car combat and the melee combat. While sure, the average gamer, the average player, is playing Mad Max partially to experience that melee combat and that vehicle combat, but I think it's a fair argument to make that the majority of people who want to play Mad Max want to play the game for the primary reason of, well, playing as the titular character Max and getting immersed in his world. And in this particular case, with this type of game, in this context, a big, wide, open world map with lots of empty space works. It makes sense and it suits the type of game that Mad Max is. It doesn't work for Rage, however, and it doesn't work for the combat gameplay that id Software has designed here. With Rage 2, id was making a fluid, visceral arena shooter, but Avalanche Studios with Rage 2 was making a Just Cause Mad Max open-world copy-paste. Imagine if Rage 2 was a school project. Two students, two classmates having to work together on the project. You hand in the final project. The id Software kid would get an A plus for their work, while the Avalanche Studios kid would get a C minus. It's still a passing grade, but it ranges from average to below average. And when compared to the grade that the id Software kid got, it looks even worse. Again, that's what's so frustrating about Rage 2. Everything id Software touched is gold. These are some of the best feeling guns in a first person shooter I have ever fired and killed shit with. And creating fun and destructive combos with the weapons and superpowers? God, it's so good, it's so much fun! And as I hope you can tell via the gameplay footage, it looks spectacular! I can feel, I can see id Software's passion in designing Rage 2's gameplay. But then, we look at Avalanche Studios, and their open world, and the story, and the side activities, and just everything they had a part in. And all I see, all I feel, is apathy. I can't help but get the impression that they just didn't give a fuck about developing Rage 2. That Avalanche took this gig from Bethesda just for the cash. They figured, fuck, we'll just do what we did in Just Cause and Mad Max, it'll work out fine. Ugh, god damn it. But do you remember earlier in the video when I said, Avalanche has two problems going on for them right now. We already went over the first one, that being Avalanche's incessant want to copy-paste their open world designs. But the other problem the studio has going for it, let's again look back at their two most recent games, Generation Zero and Just Cause 4. If we look at the reviews, we see a similar pattern in the criticisms. Poorly optimized, bugs and glitches galore, a lack of polish in general, a lack of content when compared to contemporary titles or even their previous titles. Just a general sense and feeling of the game being unfinished. Don't all these criticisms sound similar to a lot of the negative reviews Rage 2 has received? You see, the other problem with Avalanche Studios is they are releasing early access games without calling them early access. These games aren't finished, and I believe Avalanche knows they're not finished. With Just Cause 4, with Generation Zero, with Rage 2, before and after the launch of all these games, Avalanche made the claims that these games would receive constant updates and patches and fixes and free content drops along with paid expansions. And while in a certain context there's nothing specifically wrong with that, a lot of games do that. But what Avalanche Studios fails to understand is that first impressions matter. First impressions mean almost everything in the video game community. When you release games in an unfinished and unpolished state, you've immediately poisoned the first impressions, initial reviews, and reception of the game. I have no doubt that Just Cause 4, Generation Zero, and Rage 2 are all going to be pretty solid, pretty good games once they get all their hot fixes and patches and content updates and expansions and it releases a Game of the Year edition 
position, but here's the thing, the vast majority of people aren't going to give a fuck. They heard negative things about the game at launch, so now they're going to stay clear and go buy and play something else. Sure, you'll get some people that'll buy the game on sale, buy the eventual Game of the Year edition, complete edition, whatever you call it, but you've already lost thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of potential sales from the negative first impressions at launch. What I'm trying to get at here is that Avalanche Studios has become lazy. They have embraced the sin of sloth. They were successful with their early Just Cause games, they were successful with their Mad Max game, so they appear to believe they can do no wrong and they can just do the same thing over and over again and it will somehow be just as successful and critically acclaimed. And this is what makes me rage about Rage 2, because id Software went above and beyond the Call of Duty when it came to their end of developing Rage 2. I want everyone to try out and play Rage 2 because of its phenomenal id Software first-person shooter gameplay, but I'm apprehensive about even recommending the game, because in order to get to play that fantastic FPS, you gotta slog through and you gotta put up with Avalanche's mediocre open world, poor, bare bones, almost non-existent storytelling and writing. And it's just such a shame, man, what Rage 2 could have been had id Software had complete development and creative control over Rage 2. Because id it gives a shit. They're passionate about their work because they aim for that A plus grade. They don't settle for a passing grade. Ah, <sighs> god damn it. To be fair, however, to be fair, there are portions of Rage 2, there are portions of the game where Avalanche's design and id Software's design do work together in harmony. There are a few story missions and combat arenas and side activities that are legitimately well designed and thought out and do allow for fun, versatile, dynamic gameplay experiences to be had. I mean, if I'm being honest, I really, really enjoy Rage 2. The shooting is just so good, it feels so good, I have so much fun playing the game. But as soon as the shooting stops, as soon as I've killed everything, as soon as combat is over, as soon as we transition from the id portion of the game to the avalanche portion of the game, the fun comes to a screeching halt. And I'm left, wandering the open world, scrolling through my map, looking for another icon with hopefully something to do on it, and more enemies to kill. God damn it! God damn it, such wasted potential. I can't express this enough that I really do like Rage 2, and I would argue that it's not a bad game. I know I've said this already, but I can't express this enough. The gunplay, the shooting, the combat, the gameplay. Oh, it's so good. It's so well made. I have so much fun playing Rage 2. But can I personally recommend this game? Well, in the end, I have to say yes, but wait till Christmas. Don't get it just yet. Wait until after all the bug fixes and patches and free content updates have been added into the game. I highly recommend perhaps getting the game when it gets its Game of the Year edition or Complete Edition, whatever they called it, with all the DLC and expansion content bundled in. I still believe people should give Rage 2 a try if you love first-person shooters as much as I do. But if I were to play the role of pro-consumer advocate here, it is in your personal best interest as a consumer to get the game at a reduced price, either later this year or next year, after all of the post-launch polish and post-launch content has been added into the game, making it a more enjoyable experience overall. I have no doubt that by the end of the year, Avalanche, after all of the updates, will make Rage 2 into a good game, not just a good game held back by severely hindering issues. Too bad the vast majority of people aren't going to give a shit and don't care, because the first impressions and initial reception of Rage 2 is already toxic. <sighs> All developer Avalanche and publisher Bethesda needed to do, I'm not including id Software here because id Software did nothing wrong. All Avalanche and Bethesda needed to do was delay the game for a few months to polish it up, make some changes and additions here and there that made sure that id Software's gameplay was fully utilized to its best, to its fullest. I mean, sure, they wouldn't have been able to fix the poor to mediocre writing and story, but at least they could have salvaged the overall gameplay experience. A few little tweaks and additions can change everything about how a game plays and feels. <sighs> oh well, at least I can say this with confidence. Rage 2 is absolutely, definitely better than Anthem. But while Rage 2 is better than Anthem, you know what game is better than both of those games combined? Metro Exodus. Let's end this video on a positive note. If you have not bought and played Metro Exodus, 
you need to change that right away. Hell, if you haven't played any of the Metro games, the whole trilogy, you need to do that right away. But in particular, this year's Metro Exodus, man, Metro Exodus is Game of the Year 2019 material. It has fantastic, atmospheric, open world levels and environments, brilliant, well-written story and characters, and solid first-person shooting gunplay and gameplay to boot. So if you were disappointed with Rage 2, then I highly recommend picking up Metro Exodus to perk yourself up. Also, perhaps you were debating with yourself on whether or not to pick up Rage 2 or Metro Exodus, I highly recommend taking Metro Exodus. Metro Exodus is such a magnificent game. Seriously, buy it, play it, you won't regret it. Anyways, that has been a video. I hope you liked the video. If you did indeed like the video in any way, shape, or form, please be sure to hit the like button. And like button too helps me. Helps everybody involved the video. If you hit the like button, please leave a comment. The comments are down below. Like and comment to get near enough comments. Please leave a comment. If you want to help out and support this video, then please share it on social media, Twitter, and Facebook. If you want to help out and support me directly, well, there's always Patreon. Anyways, that has been a video. I'll see you all later.